thinking that he is enjoying the material world the conditioned soul suffers the threefold miseries of material existence saintly persons sadhus ashna of devotees of the lord preach krishna consciousness on the basis of the vedic literature it is only by their mercy that the conditioned soul is awakened to krishna consciousness when awakened he is no longer eager to enjoy the materialistic way of life instead he devotes himself to the loving transcendental service of the lord when one engages in the lord's devotional service he becomes detached from material enjoyment bhakti parishanu bhava virakti anyatra chaitra kaika kala this is the test by which one can tell whether he is advancing in devotional service one must be detached from material enjoyment such detachment means that maya has actually given the conditioned soul liberation from illusory enjoyment when one is advanced in krishna consciousness he does not consider himself as good as krishna whenever he thinks that he is the enjoyer of material advantages he is imprisoned in the bodily conception however when he is free from the bodily conception he can engage in devotional service which is his actual position of freedom from the clutches of maya this is also explained in the following verse from bhagavad gita 714 and that's um, devi esha gurumai mama maya duratya maam eva ye prapadyante maya metam taranti te ve krishna is saying that this divine energy of mine uh, is very difficult to overcome but those who surrender unto me can easily cross beyond it so i will mention few points uh, prabhupad mentioned in the purport that uh, we should remember that krishna is the supreme enjoyer bhokta ram yagna tapasam sarva loka maheshwaram and we need to give up this bodily conception and get rid of all our designations and we should know that we are not this body and we are not uh, a male or a female or a, a doctor or an engineer or a husband or a wife or mother or father we are not any of this our eternal constitutional position is that we are jivera swarup hoy krishna ra nitya das that we are eternal servants of krishna and by serving krishna only we can be satisfied and when we perform bhakti it should lead us to detachment and prabhupad quoted this verse here bhakti parishanu bhavo virakti and this verse is saying that when we like when we eat food we get three things we get pleasure we get nourishment and our hunger goes away so in the same way when we are correctly performing bhakti then we should get devotion to the lord and we should get direct experience of the lord means reciprocation from the lord and um, we will become detached from all material things so and then we will have no material desires to enjoy separately from krishna and all our activities whatever we do would be to give pleasure to krishna sam siddhi bharitoshana and when we are fully pure only then we can get entrance into the spiritual world because in the spiritual world everybody the gopas gopis the cows the peacocks birds trees everything everybody is trying to give pleasure to shrimati radharani and krishna and serve them krishna is the hero nayak and radharani is the heroine nayika and rest all of them are servants or rather servants of the servants dasa dasa and das and this verse is saying that uh, we can get devotion bhakti only from another bhakta another verse that i came across chitanya charitamrit same message mahat kripa vina kon karme bhakti nahi krishna bhakti dure raho sansar nahi shay unless one is favored by a pure devotee one cannot attain the platform of devotional service to say nothing of krishna bhakti one cannot even be relieved from the bondage of material existence so we can get krishna bhakti when we have the blessings of a pure devotee when we humbly surrender to a devotee like a spiritual master and pure devotee can only give us bhakti krishna cannot give us bhakti because krishna does not possess bhakti or love for himself but a pure devotee who has krishna prem can give us krishna prem and the you know the topmost pure devotee of krishna is shrimati radharani and she can give us krishna prem because she is herself filled with krishna prem so we need to approach shrimati radharani and pray to her to give us krishna prem and we have uh, heard this before prabhupad 
saying in the lecture, anyone who comes before Radha, Radharani to serve Krishna, she becomes pleased. Oh, here is a devotee of Krishna. She immediately recommends, Krishna, here is a devotee. He is better than me. This is Radharani. I may be not a devotee, I may be very fallen. But if I try to reach Krishna through Radharani, then my business is successful. Therefore, we should first worship Radharani. Instead of offering one flower to Krishna, we should just put the, put the flower in the hands of Radharani. My mother Radharani, if you kindly take this flower and offer it to Krishna. And in this way, uh, Krishna will definitely accept that flower because it's coming from Radharani and he will be pleased. So we can see the mood of Radharani. Prabhupada is saying that when somebody approaches Radharani, she introduces the devotee as, oh, this devotee is better than me. One of the 20, uh, one of the 25 transcendental qualities of Radharani is that she is Vinita. She is very humble and meek. And as we were discussing in um, my last class, to please Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Shrimati Radharani and Krishna, we should have this humble service attitude. Uh, we discussed few pastimes where Rupa Goswami was falling at the feet of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, saying, I am lower than Jaga and Medai. And Srila Prabhupada was intensely begging for Rupa Goswami's mercy at uh, um, Radha Damodar um, Samadhi Mandir. Um, so like that, we should consider ourselves insignificant, knowing that we are so far away from being a pure devotee. And we need the blessings from Srimati Radharani and Krishna and other pure devotees to make advancement. So every morning we chant um, this Tulsi, uh, prayers to Tulsi Maharani. Tulsi Maharani Vrinda Devi is a pure devotee. Um, and we are praying to Tulsi Maharani. Namo Nama Tulasi Krishna Preyasi Namo Nama Radha Krishna Seva Papa Eya Bhilashi Che Tumara Sharan Lai Tara Vanch Purna Hoi Kripa Kori Karo Tare Vrinda Vanvasi Mora Yehi Abhilashi Vilas Kunje Diyo Vas Naya nehi ribo sada jugal ruparasi. So we are praying to Tulsi Maharani. Oh Tulsi, beloved of Krishna, I bow down before you again and again. My desire is to obtain the service of Shri Shri Radha and Krishna. Whoever takes shelter of you has his wishes fulfilled and bestowing your mercy on him, you make him a resident of Vrindavan. My desire is that you always grant me a residence in the pleasure grows of Sri Vrindavan Dham. Thus within my vision, I always behold the beautiful pastimes of Radha and Krishna and make me a follower of the gopis of Raj and give me the privilege of devotional service. Make me your own maid servant. So every day morning, we are praying to a pure devotee, Tulsi Maharani, who's very dear to Krishna, to grant us residence in Golak Vrindavan and give us the service of Sri Sri Radha and Krishna. We should sing this Tulsi Arti daily and get her blessings because only by the blessings of a pure devotee we can uh, attain the service of Sri Sri Radha and Krishna. And Prahlad Maharaj also says this verse in uh, Srimad Bhagavatam Naisha Matis Tavad Urukramangrim Sparshate Anartha Pagamo Yad Artha Mahiyasham Padrajo Bishekam Nishkinchananam Navrinita Yavat. So, unless we get uh, the dust from the lotus feet or do a abhishek from the dust of the lotus feet of a pure devotee, we cannot attain Krishna. So I was also thinking that um, we should always consider that uh, other devotees to be more advanced than us and be always appreciating and focusing on their good qualities. And if we are submissive and we have this submissive humble attitude, then we will not commit any Vaishnav Aparad. Because Aparad, Aparad means an offense against Srimati Radharani. Anything that takes us away from Radharani is considered an aparad. So, and we know the most dangerous aparad is Vaishnava aparad. So, if we have this submissive, humble attitude and we consider, we, we consider others to be more advanced, then we will not uh, have this aparad. And Krishna shows us in this pastime of uh, Ras Leela in Canto 10 uh, how if we are proud, 
or if we think that we are better and more advanced than others, then Krishna leaves us. And we were discussing a little bit yesterday with Gokuleshwar Prabhu. Let me read a few verses from this section of um, Ras Leela. So in Srimad Bhagavatam, it's mentioned that um, uh, when the Ras Leela was happening, uh, or gopis were with Krishna, the gopis became proud of themselves for having received such, such special attention from Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and each of them thought herself the best woman on earth. Lord Keshav, seeing the gopis too proud of their good fortune, wanted to relieve them of this pride and show them further mercy. Thus he immediately disappeared. So in this pastime, um, it is mentioned that um, uh, Krishna was dancing with the gopis and uh, Radharani came in a sulky man mood when she saw Krishna enjoying with other gopis. So she left the Ras Leela and Krishna went after her. And Chukdev uh, Goswami in this verse 10, 30, 28. Yeah. So this verse, Anaradito nunam bhagavan hari rishwara yanno vihaya govinda pritoyam anyad raha. So in this verse, uh, Shukdev Goswami is in a hidden way. Um, he is expressing the glories of Srimati Radha Rani. So the gopis when they saw that um, Krishna left uh, for a particular, uh, behind a particular gopi, and this gopi is Srimati Radha Rani, certainly this particular gopi has perfectly worshipped the all-powerful personality of Godhead, Govinda, since he was so pleased with her that he abandoned the rest of us and brought her to a secluded place. So Shukdev Goswami is explaining that um, the Ras in the Ras Leela of Krishna, how Krishna, he was in, in the assembly of Raj Gopis and he left all of them to enjoy the pleasure of one Gopi. And at that time when Krishna left, the Gopis were searching and searching and they saw the footprints of one Gopi who Krishna left them for. And all these Gopis, they all declared that, yes, there is this one Gopi whose worship is so supremely superior to even ours that Krishna has left all of us to accept her worship. And uh, Vishwanath Chakravati Thakur is saying that in this process, Shukdev Goswami, he could not contain himself and he indirectly spoke Srimati Radha Rani's name, Anaratito Nunam. And from this verse, he glorifies the supreme position of Srimati Radha Rani. And we know that uh, Radha Rani and other gopis' names, they are not directly mentioned in Srimad Bhagavatam because Shukdev Goswami is a personal parrot of Radha Rani. And he feared that if he takes the name of Radharani, he might go into ecstasy and then he would not be able to complete the rest of the Srimad Bhagavatam and Parikshit Maharaj has only a few days left. So then it's mentioned that um, when Krishna left the Ras Leela um, from the gopis and went after uh, Srimati Radharani, Krishna decorates Srimati Radharani with flowers and pleases her. But then Radharani develops pride that oh my beloved has rejected all the other gopis for me so few verses there uh, so Radharani is saying uh, this uh, verse is saying as the two lovers passed through one part of the Vrindavan forest the special gopi began began feeling proud of herself she told Lord Keshav I cannot walk any further please carry me wherever you want to go thus addressed Lord Krishna replied just climb on my shoulder but as soon as he said this he disappeared. His beloved, he disappeared. His beloved consort then immediately felt grave remorse. So Radharani also developed pride, and Krishna left her. So, in this pastime, as we were discussing yesterday, although Radharani and Gopi's love for Krishna is very exalted, this pride is exhibited as a lesson for all of the conditioned souls like us. And Krishna is sending us this message that there is no room for pride in pure selfless love for Krishna. As soon as we get pride that we are somehow better than this or that devotee, that I am special, or see Krishna is reciprocating with me, as soon as we have this thought, Krishna leaves us. So that's the first lesson uh, here in this past time Krishna is teaching us. When pride comes in the heart, Krishna leaves our heart. Another thing is uh, not being envious of other devotees. So when other devotees are advancing and doing nice service and receiving appreciation from others, we should be genuinely happy for them. So 
uh, Shila Prabhupada writes in one purport that when we become happy at somebody else's fortune, then we get more mercy and more blessing than the other person. And so like if someone is blessed by the Lord and gets advancement in bhakti and gets appreciation from the Guru, and if I simply become happy that they have gotten that, then I'll get more mercy than that person. So we should celebrate others' success and not feel envious. So I was, uh, I heard a nice quote, and it says that uh, when we don't accept others' success, it becomes envy. But when we accept it, it becomes inspiration. So there is no room for envy in the spiritual world. Radharani and all the gopis, they are trying to help each other do more and more and better service for Krishna. They are inspiring each other. And yesterday, Gokula Shri Prabhu was saying that Radharani's mood is if Krishna wants to enjoy with another gopi, then Radharani is willing to become her maid servant and please her and bring her to Krishna. And uh, Chitane, in Chaitanya Charitamrita, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is expressing this mood. I'll read a few verses in that section. Yes. Okay. So, yeah, so here these verses are spoken by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in the mood of Srimati Radharani. Lord Krishna has become indifferent to me just to test my love and my friends say better to disregard him. So Krishna maybe has gone to some other gopi and here Radharani is in the, um, is in distressed and that Krishna has not come and he has gone somewhere else and all the friends of Radharani, Vishaka, Lalita, they are saying, why are you bothered so much why don't you forget Krishna so my friends are saying better to disregard him while Srimati Radharani was thinking in this way the characteristics of natural love became manifest because of her pure heart the ecstatic symptoms of envy great eagerness humility zeal and supplication all became manifest at once in that mood, the mind of Srimati Radharani was agitated and therefore she spoke a verse of advanced devotion to her gopi friends. In the same spirit of ecstasy, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu recited that verse. So here, this is the verse, uh, Ashali Sheva Padritam Panishtumam. That's the, the eighth verse of uh, Shikshashtakam. Ashali Sheva Padritam Panishtumam Adarshnan Marmahatam Kurotu Vayatha Tathava Vidadatu Lampato Mat Prananathas Tu Saivana Paraha. So Radharani is saying, Let Krishna tightly embrace this maid servant who has fallen at his lotus feet, or let him trample me or break my heart by not being visible to me. He is a debauchee after all and can do whatever he likes, but still he alone and no one else is a worshipable Lord of my heart. I am a maid servant at the lotus feet of Krishna. He is embodiment of transcendental happiness and mellows. If he likes, he can uh, tightly embrace me and make me feel oneness with him. Or by not giving me his audience, he may corrode my mind and body. Nevertheless, he is the lord of my life. My dear friend, just hear the decision of my mind. Krishna is the lord of my life in all conditions, whether he shows me affection or kills me by giving me unhappiness. Sometimes Krishna gives up the company of other gopis and becomes controlled, mind, body and words by me. Thus he manifests my good fortune and gives others distress by performing his loving affairs with me. Or since, after all, he is very cunning, obstinate debauchee with the propensity to cheat, he takes to the company of other women. He then indulges in loving affairs with them in front of me to give distress to my mind. Nevertheless, he is the lord of my life. I do not mind my personal distress. I only wish for the happiness of Krishna, for his happiness is the goal of my life. However, if he feels great happiness in giving me distress, that distress is the best of my happiness. If Krishna, attracted by the beauty of some other woman, wants to enjoy with her, but is unhappy because he cannot get her, I fall down at her feet, catch her hand and bring her to Krishna to engage her for his happiness. If a gopi envious of me satisfies Krishna and Krishna desires her, I shall not hesitate to go to her house and become her maid servant for then my happiness will be awakened. So, yeah, so this is uh, the mood of uh, Radharani, the prema prakashta, the highest level of prema. Um, Srimati Radharani's unconditional 
selfless and self forgetful love and she is willing to become a maid servant of another gopi and bring her to krishna if that gives krishna pleasure so pure devotee also has the same mood that krishna whether you embrace me or you crush me under your lotus feet you give me darshan or you disappear or neglect me whatever you do you are the only lord of my life you make me dance as you like i am a puppet in your hands i place my life in your hands manaso deho geho jo kichu mor arpiyu tu apade nand kishor mind body family whatever is mine i have surrendered at your lotus feet so do whatever you like o krishna i am yours so that's the the mood of a pure devotee also another thing i was thinking that uh, krishna wants to teach us from this <clears throat> past time of ras leela is um, krishna wants to establish that the gopi's love for him is the highest so when krishna disappeared um, gopis frantically began to look for krishna everywhere they became totally mad they were asking the trees and the deers and the flowers and creepers and earth if they have seen krishna and they started enacting krishna's pastimes and we have a picture of that here the gopis are enacting krishna's pastimes um this gopi has become kali and this gopi has become krishna and is dancing on this gopi this gopi has uh, is raising the govardhan hill and um let's say and this is a shakta uh, shakat Uh, uh krishna is hitting the cart um past time so all these gopis they were enacting these krishna's past times and remembering how um this gopi is trying to stand as in the threefold bending form remembering how krishna used to you know play his flute um how he used to joke with them um so like uh, when krishna left them they they became totally mad and they were trying to remember uh, krishna and they were crying loudly and reminding each other of the sweet pastimes of krishna basically what they were doing was mak chitta mat gata pran bodhayanta parasparam kathayanta scha mam nityam tushyanti charamanti cha they were deriving great bliss in talking and singing about krishna with each other and um, krishna was actually hiding um, behind in uh, behind a tree and seeing what the gopis were doing and seeing their eagerness and um, seeing them crying uh, krishna finally appeared in front of them and we have this verse in so here we can see krishna is hiding and he is hearing all the things that uh, gopis are discussing with each other we have this verse 321 yeah shri shuka vacha iti gopaya pragayanta taya pralab प्रलपंतयश्चा चित्रधा रुरुधा सु स्वरम राजन कृष्णा दर्शन लालसा सुखदेव गोस्वामी सिंह ओ किंग हैविंग दस संग एंड स्पोकन देयर हार्ट्स आउट इन वेरियस चार्मिंग वेज द गोपीज बिगन टू वीप लाउडली दे वर वेरी ईगर टू सी कृष्णा सो वी कैन सी कृष्णा इज टीचिंग अस दैट इफ वी क्राई आउट विद ग्रेट ईगरनेस कृष्णा दर्शन लालसा देन he will reveal himself as he did in this case and prabhupad writes in nectar of devotion we'll read one paragraph that one should learn how to cry for the lord one should learn this small technique and he should be very eager and actually cry to become engaged in some particular type of service this is called lolium and such tears are the price for the highest perfection if one develops this lolium or excessive eagerness for meeting and serving the lord in a particular way that is a price to enter into the kingdom of god otherwise there is no material calculation for the value of the ticket by which one can enter the kingdom of god the only price for such entrance is lolya lalasa mai or desire and great eagerness so we must when we chant the hari krishna mantra we should chant crying out uh, with great eagerness to be with krishna and to be with and to be with shrimati radharani and krishna and um, engage in a particular type of service to them uh, so this hari krishna mantra and prabhupad says is a desperate cry of a child for the mother shrimati radharani or hara oh mother radhe please wake us up from the nightmare of this material life and remind us of our father who we have forgotten and take us back home 
so it's a it's a cry to uh, our mother shrimati radharani and shrimati radharani she is the tender hearted female counterpart of lord krishna and represents his compassionate nature so she gives mercy very easily if we cry out to her she is a mother mother always comes quickly when the child is crying like we have this um, past time of uh, radharani and the uh, jackal i was hearing radhanath swami discuss this past time one time in raj there was some little children who were harassing a low born insignificant jackal and uh, now among animals jackal is the the lowest class it's very dirty filthy and um, it has no integrity or or dignity and one of the aus- inauspicious signs mentioned in the scripture is that when the jackal is howling so it's considered very inauspicious so these little rajbasi boys they were harassing this jackal and this jackal was running for his life and they were the boys were chasing after him and throwing rocks and this jackal was screaming and howling and he was running and he went into a hole um in a tree and these little boys they set a fire around this hole to burn him and the heat was intolerable and jackal was screaming for his life as he was being burnt so shrimati radharani happened to be walking with her sakis in that area and she told uh, lalita sakhi that this is my land of rajbhumi no one should be crying and suffering here go find out who it is and help them so lalita sakhi she came running to that place and and the boys were all gathered around this hole and laughing and laugh and laughing and lalita sakhi asked them to go home and she put out the fire and she brought the jackal out and the jackal was trembling in fear and lalita devi brought that in insignificant filthy jackal to shrimati radharani and the jackal bowed his head to her lotus feet and radharani blessed the jackal how did she bless the de- jackal she gave him a body of a gopi in the spiritual world to be her eternal associate because that jackal sincerely cried out for her mercy with all humility and helplessness and took shelter of her so radhanath swami maharaj was saying the moral of the story is that whoever we are even if we are as low class as a jackal if we actually take shelter of shrimati radharani we will get the ultimate destination of life the hole that the jackal was in represents this material existence and the jackal represents the living entity who has fallen into this abominable condition of envy for the lord and the fire around the hole represents a samsara davanal the fire of material existence and the screaming out of jackal represents the loud sincere helpless calling out of the holy names hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 ram hare ram 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 hare hare even one time if we can call out the holy name in a state of utter helplessness and humility shrimati radharani would hear us and um, she will respond and uh, and what she will do she will send her representative lalita sakhi she came to the jackal lalita sakhi represents the spiritual master who comes on behalf of shrimati radharani and rescues the fallen souls who are trapped in this hole of material existence being burnt by the fire of material suffering and brings the conditioned soul to the lotus feet of shrimati radharani that's what the spiritual master does and when radharani says to krishna please accept this devotee and krishna cannot refuse he is eternally conquered in a subordinate position by the love of shrimati radharani so we have uh, this hari krishna mantra a uh, hari in the hari krishna mantra is the name of shrimati radharani which means that she by the power of her affection she conquers the heart of krishna that's what hari means and we you know krishna is he is all attractive and yesterday we were hearing how krishna attracts the whole universe by his flute and um, and krishna plays his flute um all the living entities become attracted lord shiva brahma four kumaras their meditations break the cows stop chewing the yamuna flows backwards the mountains and stones melt the gopis drop all their housework and come running to krishna so by just blowing air inside this hollow bamboo stick krishna controls the whole universe but what happens when krishna sees shrimati radharani 
Krishna becomes stunned. The flute in Krishna's hand slips and falls on the ground. Krishna's crown slips. The chadar that he's wearing also slips and Krishna doesn't even realize that. And he continues to blow air in empty space, thinking that he's holding his flute. So this is what happens when Krishna sees Srimati Radharani. Krishna becomes totally controlled by Srimati Radharani. Krishna is Madan Mohan. Radharani is called Madan Mohan Mohini. And just like Radharani attracts Krishna, in Bhakti Rasamrit Sindhu Rupa Goswami describes that pure devotional service is also Shri Krishna Akarshini. This pure devotional service, Anya Bhalashita Shunyam Jnana Karmade Navitam Anukulina Krishna Anushilinam Bhakti Ruttama. Performing devotional service only for the pleasure of Krishna and doing it um, uh, uninterruptedly. That pure devotional service also attracts Krishna. And uh, Prabhupada writes that Krishna attracts everyone, but devotional service attracts Krishna. And the symbol of devotional service in the highest degree is Srimati Radharani. And to perform devotional service means to follow in the footsteps of Radharani and devotees in Vrindavan. And uh, devotees in Vrindavan, and they put uh, all these devotees in Vrindavan, they put themselves under the care of Radharani to uh, achieve perfection. So Prabhupada writes that in the Nectar of Devotion. So, um, so like that, um, we can attract Krishna through pure devotional service. So Srimati Radharani, she, she's so beautiful. Her complexion is um, that of um, molten gold. She is called Tapta Kanchan Gorangi. So Srila Prabhupada once said that Krishna's face is so beautiful that if you see it, you will fall unconscious. But even for a moment, you see the face of Srimati Radharani. She is so beautiful that you would die. So I was remembering one pastime of a Rupa Goswami. We'll read here. So Rupa Goswami, we discussed here last class. He, under the order of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he went to Vrindavan to establish the four missions that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told him. So Rupa Goswami is in Vrindavan. Once she, Sanatan Goswami and she Rupa Goswami were sitting in their bhajan kuti on the side of Radha Kund, immersed in narrations about Sri Krishna. Sanatan Goswami asked Rupa Goswami, Rupa, what are you writing these days? Sri Rupa showed Sanatan, Chatu Pushpanjali, a stotra that he had composed. The first verse reads, O Vrindavaneshwari, I offer prayers to you again and again. You are golden complexion, like ever fresh Gorochana. Your cloth is the color of a beautiful blue lotus flower, and the upper part of your long braid, which is decorated with jewels, appears like the hood of a black female serpent. So, uh, Rupa Goswami was writing glorification of Srimati Radharani's beauty. When Sh 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 Sanatan Goswami read this, he said, Rupa, with this phrase, Veni Vyalangana Phanam, you compare the wavy black braided hair of Srimati Radhika to a poisonous black female serpent. She who possesses all qualities, Srimati Radha, Radhika, is extremely charming, tender and sweet, and is the beloved of Sri Krishna. I do not like this comparison. So Sri Sanatan Goswami is saying that you're comparing the hair of Radharani to a, a hood of a black serpent. No, I don't think that's a good comparison. So Sri Rupa Goswami smiled and humbly requested Sri Sanatan Goswami to suggest a better description. But Sanatan Goswami could not think of one at that moment. I will correct it later, he said, and went on his way contemplating the matter. When he reached this place called Jhulantal to the west of Radha Kund, he saw a young cowherd girl swinging on a beautiful swing that was hanging from the branches of a Kadamba tree. Her friends were pushing her to and fro, singing a Malara Lag. Suddenly, Sri Sanatan Goswami saw a black female serpent with an expanded hood slithering on the swing, black tresses of that young girl. So Sanatan Goswami, he saw that oh, there is a black snake um, behind that girl. Thinking to save her from the serpent, he ran towards her shouting, Lali, Lali, beware, there is a black serpent in your hair. When he came nearer, however, everything disappeared. There was no Kishori, no Sakhis, and no swing. He wept with happiness and returned to Rupa Goswami, saying, Rupa, your simile is perfect. 
Shrimati Kishori kindly granted me darshan of her waving braid. There is no need for you to make any correction. So it was Shrimati Radha Rani. She personally came to prove true the words of her servant, uh, Rupa Manjari, who is Rupa Goswami. Um, whatever our acharyas have written in their uh, commentaries, uh, they have actually they are, they belong to the spiritual world. So uh, there are so many nice commentaries and books written by our acharyas. Uh, they know Shrimati Radha Rani perfectly. So. It is mentioned um, that uh, Rupa Goswami, uh, I was hearing that uh, he used to do his bhajan in a place called Ter Kadamba in uh, Rindavan and he used to sit under a Kadamba tree. And when he would remember the separation pastimes of Srimati Radharani and Krishna and recite verses of separation, all the leaves of the Kadamba tree, they would dry up uh, in the fire of separation and fall to the ground. And when he would recite verses of the meeting, uh, of union between Radha and Krishna, the Kandamba tree would sprout new leaves. Uh, and it's also mentioned that one uh, Rupa Goswami, uh, one time his heart burnt like fire, thinking of separation from Radha and Krishna. And when he exhaled his breath, his breath touched one of the devotees near him. And that devotee was so burnt by the heat uh, that blisters broke out on his body. So uh, Rupa Goswami, he is feeling that... Uh, heat of separation and he actually burnt the other devotee with his uh, breath. So Prabhupada mentions that about this mood of uh, Goswamis, how they uh, perform Vipralamba Seva. And Prabhupada writes that these Goswamis, when they were in Vrindavan, they never said that I have seen Krishna. Although they were the most perfect, they never said I have seen Krishna. The Goswamis were praying in this way. He Radhe Raj Devike Chalalite, He Nanda Shunokuta. O Radharani, where are you? Where are your associates? Where, where are you, o son of Nanda Maharaj Krishna? Are you near Govardhan Hill or on the bank of Yamuna? Where are you? Their business was crying like this. So throughout this whole tract of Vrindavan, they were crying and searching after Radha and Krishna. So we have to follow the footsteps of the Goswamis, how to search out Krishna and Radharani in Vrindavan or within our heart. This is the process of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's bhajan. Feeling of separation, Vipralambha Seva. The more you feel separation from Krishna, you should understand that you are advancing. Don't try to see Krishna artificially. Be advanced in separation feeling, and then it will be perfect. So this is uh, from Shri Prabhupada's lecture. So we should have this mood uh, that we are separated from Srimati Radharani and Krishna, who are our mother and father from the, and we are separated from the spiritual world, which is our real home. And we are rotting in the material world and crying and um, suffering so much distress, like that jackal was suffering uh, with the fire around him and um, uh, people throwing stones at him. Um, so we should feel like that and uh, that we are suffering here and we are, we are missing out on all the fun that is going on in the spiritual world. Uh, that's the, the feeling of separation, Vipralamba Bhav. So Rupa Goswami, he has written many books on the uh, intimate pastimes of Radha and Krishna. And, and he wrote a book about uh, the separation of Radha and Krishna. Uh, I think it's Vidagda Madhav or Lalit Madhav when Krishna leaves Vrindavan and Radharani is crying and uh, I was hearing that when uh, Raghunath Das Goswami used to uh, read these books of Rupa Goswami, he used to cry and cry and he was about to commit suicide, uh, feeling so much pain and separation. Um, but then uh, Rupa Goswami, he quickly wrote a book called Dan Keli Comedy. It's a comedy tax collection pastimes of Radha and Krishna. And when Raghunath Das Goswami read that, he was laughing so hard and he forgot about his suicide plan. So I would like to read these uh, few pastimes from this uh, Dan Keli comedy. Um, so it is described that when the Gopas, they would uh, be playing in the Vrindavan forest and having lunch uh, um, in the afternoon, the Gopis would be passing through the forest, carrying their butter pots on their heads and singing songs. And Krishna and Balram and the cowherd boys would go to them and inquire about the price of the milk and yogurt. But when the gopis would tell them the price and Krishna and the boys would throw a stone and break their pots and drink all the milk and yogurt that was falling from the pots. And 
they would also ask them to pay a toll tax so let's read this past time of uh, dan ghati dan ghati is situated in the middle of govardhan on the present day road between mathura and kamyavan even today a toll must be paid to pass through here at the time of krishna's past times krishna became a toll collector and performed dana leela or toll pass time with the gopis through loving quarrels and sarcasm this past time has been beautifully described in dan keli comedy in dal dan keli chintamani and other books of gaudiya goswamis once on the bank of govinda kund shri bhaguri rishi was performing a sacrifice for the pleasure of the supreme lord the cowherd boys and the girls were bringing ingredients for the sacrifice from distant places from the other side of dan ghati shrimati radhika and her sakhis were also bringing yogurt milk butter and various kinds of milk sweets such as rabdi so they, there was a sacrifice being performed by this shri bhaguri rishi and all the gopis they were bringing all these yogurt milk and butter and for the sacrifice shri krishna along with subal madhumangal and other sakhas obstructed their path and forcibly demanded toll tax and the sakhas and gopis began to taunt each other standing in his enchanting threefold bending form shri krishna mischievously mischievously asked the gopis what are you carrying milk yogurt and butter for bhaguri rishi sacrifice they replied madhumangal's mouth started to water upon the mere mention of butter quickly pay the toll tax and move on he said what toll tax lalita angrily asked we have never paid any toll tax before you can pass only after paying toll tax krishna insisted since when have you become the toll collector here shrimati radharani asked did you inherit this place from your father don't be so insolent he re- krishna replied i am vrindavaneshwar the rule the ruler of the kingdom of vrindavan radharani said how is that krishna said vrinda is my wedded wife krishna is saying the property of the wife is also the property of the husband vrindavan is the kingdom of vrinda devi and therefore it is my kingdom so krishna is saying that vrinda is my wife and because vrinda owns vrindavan therefore i am the proprietor of vrindavan really lalita answered haughtily we have never heard anything about this let us ask vrinda right now so lalita she turned to vrinda vrinda is this kannu the black one that's how they would address krishna is this the black is this black one your husband never vrinda flared in disgust i have no relation with this lying debauchee previously this was my kingdom but i have given it to vrindavaneshwari shrimati radhika all the sakhis burst into laughter laughter which slightly embarrassed shri krishna nonetheless he was determined to collect the toll tax after this love quarrel the gopis exchanged the toll tax of prem at dan nivartan kun some distance from dan ghati so sometimes it is mentioned that when gopis ask krishna what are you taxing us for krishna says you you have to pay tax for all the beautiful parts of your body for your beautiful teeth beautiful eyes you have to pay hundreds and thousands of pure pearls diamonds and jewels and lalita sakhi would say krishna who are you to tax us and she she radha is vrindavaneshwari she is the queen of vrindavan we should be taxing you because your cows are eating shrimati radha rani's grass every blade of grass belongs to her if you don't honor shrimati radha rani then we will go and we will tell yashoda mai and we'll tell jatila and they'll come and they'll punish you so like that uh, loving quarrels were happening and uh, uh, another one very funny past time at sankri kol that's another place in vrindavan at this dan ghati shri krishna and his gop gopa friends would become tax collectors and demand milk yogurt and butter as toll tax from the gopis when the gopis refused to give any tax krishna would forcibly plunder and relish their milk products so he would th- throw their butter butter pots or take their butter pots and then plunder them need them the gopis being tired of these daily encounters decided one day to retaliate strongly and they were gopis were tired of this every day their butter pots are being broken so they were thinking what should we do they decided that on a chosen day they would all hide in the caves and dense kunjas on the hill on both sides of the narrow pathway a few gopis would then cross sankri kor carrying pots of milk yogurt and butter on their heads the plan was that 
the moment Krishna and his sakhas would stop them and try to plunder their load, the gopis would call out to their friends hiding nearby who would at once descend from their hideouts. Then under the leadership of Lalita, they would teach Krishna and his sakhas a good lesson. So the plan was, and there were hundreds and thousands of gopis and they would be hiding in the, uh, in the kunjas and few gopis would be carrying the butter pots and then these uh, Krishna and his few friends, they are like two or three in number, they would come, try to plunder the butter pots. <coughs> the other gopis, which are hundreds and thousands in number, they would attack uh, these uh, few uh, coward uh, friends of Krishna. And so it happened that the next day, thousands and thousands of gopis divided into groups and hid themselves in the dense kunjas and large caves around Sankri Kho. Then, as usual, a few gopis placed pots of milk and yogurt on their heads and made their way toward Sankri Kho. Krishna, Madhu Mangal and the other sakhas obstructed their path and forcibly began to plan plunder their milk and yogurt. At once, these gopis signaled the gopis who were hiding and a wonderful pastime took place. Five to ten gopis forcefully caught hold of Krishna. Another five to ten caught hold of Madhu Mangal and further groups captured Subal, Arjun, Lavanga and other sakhas. They slapped their cheeks till they were swollen. They then tied the tuft of hair on the back of their head, the shikhas, to the branches of the trees and asked them, What pleasure is there in plundering our yogurt? Will you ever do it again? Madhu Mangal folded his hands and prayed at the feet of Lalita. Please spare me. I was very hungry. I'm a simple Brahmana boy who fell under the influence of that fickle Krishna. I shall never behave like this again. The gopis thus taught the Sakha as a lesson. Srimati Radhika, Vishakha and some other gopis had captured Krishna. They slapped his cheeks a few times and then forcibly dressed him like a woman with a blouse and a skirt. <laughs> so they caught hold of Krishna and they were slapping his cheeks and they dressed him like a woman with a blouse and a skirt. They even put vermilion in the parting of his hair, bangles on his arms, anklets on his feet and so on. They covered half of his face with a veil, placed a pot of yogurt on his head and began to make fun of him by demanding tax on the yogurt. And from the top of the hill, Lalita Sakhi aimed a stone at the pot of yogurt on Krishna's head, breaking it and wrenching his whole body. All the Sakhis began to laugh and clap and Sham felt very ashamed. Will you dare to demand tax on our yogurt ever again? They asked. Hold your ears and vow. From today, I will never try to tax the gopis' yogurt. So they forced Krishna to repeat this statement. From today, I will never try to tax the gopis' yogurt. So we can see <clears throat> Krishna. Um, he's a supreme lord, but uh, in front of his devotees, he surrenders. One of the qualities, uh, one of the 64 transcendental qualities of Krishna, the most prominent is that he is Bhritte Vash, uh, it's Bhritte Vashita. Bhritte means servant and Vashita means bringing under control. So, to conquer Krishna. So, Krishna has this quality that his servants can conquer him. Like these gopis can uh, bring Krishna under control and uh, can conquer him. And whenever there is a fight or competition between Radharani and Krishna, Krishna always loses and accepts his defeat. Although Krishna is very clever, and we see in the butter stealing pastimes of Krishna, we heard that he gives so many clever excuses around what he's doing in the store round, a storeroom of uh, a gopi and why is there butter on his face. So he gives all these clever responses. But we see when there is an argument between Radharani and Krishna, Krishna he cannot come up with any response, any clever response. Radharani defeats him. So we'll read one, one such pastime that happened in Kusum Sarovar. Kusum Sarovar is on the right of the Parikrama path, about one and a half miles southwest of Sri Radha Kund. A forest of flowers was here full of varieties of trees. So it's uh, Kusum Sarovar is a forest of flowers and there were varieties of trees and creepers and flowers. Bailey, Chameli, Juhu, Malika, like that there. And Srimati Radharani would used to come there and pick flowers with her girlfriends. But her real intent was to meet Sri Krishna, with whom she would have love, 
quarrels and sarcastic exchanges full of rasa so krishna bhavan mrita describes one day she radha rani was picking flowers here with her girlfriends when krishna arrived and this exchange took place so krishna is saying who is there radha is saying nobody krishna saying tell me honestly who are you radha saying nobody krishna saying you are speaking in a very crooked way radha and you speak in a very straight way don't you krishna i am asking you who who you are radha don't you know krishna what are you doing radha picking flowers to worship the sun god krishna have you received permission from anyone to do so radha there is no need of anyone's permission krishna aha i have got a thief today i wondered who was stealing flowers every day and ruining this garden now i've caught you and will punish you straight away radha since when have you become the master of this flower ga- garden have you ever planted a single flower here have you ever even watered one on the contrary you ruined this flower garden with your hundreds and thousands of cows and your boisterous brazen friends indeed since when have you become the protector of this garden krishna do not defame a pious righteous person like me now i shall teach you a good lesson radha haha you are a highly pious and righteous person are you you killed a woman right after your birth you lied to your mother even in childhood you stole butter from the house of the neighboring gopis and when you became a little older you stole the clothes of the young gopis and only a few days ago you killed a calf this is the extent of your pious saintly conduct hearing the retort krishna scratched his head and looked towards clever madhumangal who advised him one's well being lies in remaining quiet and at this point all the sakis surrounded sham sundar and began to clap so again krishna uh, lost in this loving argument with uh, shrimati radha rani he didn't he he didn't um, he had no other words to come up with and madhumangal said it's better you stay quiet so <clears throat> not only we have shrimati radha rani and krishna having loving arguments their their parrots also have loving quarrel in in chatanya charitamrita is mentioned that chatanya mahaprabhu when he entered vrindavan he was hearing this male and female parrots converse few um, verses were mentioned chatanya charitamrita uh, more verses are mentioned in uh, govinda lilamrit of um, of krishna das kaviraj goswami so these are parrots of uh, shrimati radha rani and krishna shuka and sari shuka is krishna's parrot and sari is uh, radha rani's parrot they are also having these loving quarrel arguments so shuka saying my krishna is madan mohan the enchanter of cupid's mind sari yes he is as long as my radha is at his left side otherwise he is only madan cupid shuka my krishna lifted giriraj on his finger sari because my radha rani transmitted power into him otherwise he could have how could he have done so so shuka my krishna is the life of the whole universe sari my radha is the life of that life shuka my krishna's head is beautifully decorated with a peacock feather sari only because my radha rani's name is marked on that feather shuka the peacock feather on my krishna's head leans to the left shari because it wants to bow down to my radha rani's feet shuka my krishna is the moon shari my radha is the trap that captures that moon shuka there is no need to quarrel uselessly let us glorify the youthful couple together shari i happily agree to this so loving quarrel between the parrots uh, establishing who is greater <clears throat> shuka is saying krishna is greater and shari is saying no radha rani is greater and uh, yeah chetana mahaprabhu was hearing this exchange this mention and um, few more past times we'll read and then i'll stop so bhakti ratnakar mentions this past time um of um, some past time that happened at chatravan so chatravan is situated on the mathura delhi highway approximately 20 miles northwest of mathura and 4 miles southwest of payagaon Here, Shri Dham and other sakhas seated Shri Krishna on a throne and declared him the exalted king, Chhatrapati of Braj. So, 
Krishna's friends are establishing Krishna as the king of um, this place, Vrindavan, as Chhatrapati. They performed a wonderful, unprecedented pastime here. Sri Balramji sat on Krishna's left side and began executing the duties of minister of state. And Sri Dham held an umbrella over Krishna's head. Arjuna fanned him with a chamara. Madhu Mangal sat in front of Krishna and acted as a court jester. Subal offered him betel nuts and subahu, vishal, and some other sakhas assumed the roles of subjects. Through Madhu Mangal, Chhatrapati Maharaj Krishna proclaimed throughout the land. So Madhu Mangal is proclaiming that Maharaj Chhatrapati Nanda Kumar Krishna, he's a sole emperor here. No one else can, ha ha uh, no one else has claim to any authority. But daily the gopis destroy this garden, therefore they should all be punished. So in this way, Sri Krishna and his friends. They were sporting in a playful way. And then um, related to this is another a place called Umrao. This village is situated four or five miles away from Chhatravan. And when the Sakis heard Sri Krishna's proclamation that they complained to Lalita about him, and Bhakti Ratnakar describes, Lalita became angry and said, who is that person who dares to claim authority over Radhika's kingdom? We will retaliate against him. Saying this, she seated Radhika on a beautiful throne and pronounced her to be the undisputed queen, Umrao. So the Sakis are establishing Radharani as a queen, Umrao. Chitra Saki held an umbrella over Radhika's head and Vishaka fanned her with a chamara. Lalita sat on Radhika's left as her minister of state. One Saki offered her betel nuts and the remaining Sakis acted as subjects. Sitting on her throne, Radhika ordered the Sakis. So Radhika is ordering the Sakis, go and defeat the person who desires to usurp my kingdom. Bind him and bring him before me. So receiving the order of their Umrao, thousands and thousands of Sakis with flower sticks in their hands left for battle. So they went to compete with the, the Sakhas and of Krishna who were establishing Krishna as the, as the, the ruler. And they were carrying flower sticks in their hand, hands to fight with them. When Arjuna, Lavanga, Brunga, Kokila, Subal and Madhumangal saw them approaching, they fled in all directions. One clever Sakhi, however, caught Madhumangal, bound him with a flower garland and brought him to the lotus feet of Umrao. So they caught Madhumangal and brought them to brought him to uh, Srimati Radharani's feet. Some gopis slapped Madhumangal's cheeks a few times and said, What audacity have you to try to unlawfully seize the authority of this kingdom from our Umrao? <coughs> We will punish you right now. Madhu Mangal bowed his head low like a defeated general. That is only befitting, he said. We concede defeat, but please hand down such a punishment that my stomach will be, full, be filled. So he says, I agree, I am defeated, but in your punishment, can you do, give me a, such a punishment that my stomach will be filled? So Maharani Radhika started to laugh and said, this is just some gluttonous brahmana, release him. The Sakhis filled his stomach with laddus and let him go. Madhu Mangal returned to Chhatrapati Maharaj Krishna and pretending to cry, gave him a detailed report of his humiliating detention. Hearing this, Krishna together with Madhu Mangal and the Sakhas invaded Umrao. When Srimadhi Radhika saw her pran Vallabh Shri Krishna, she became quite embarrassed and quickly tried to take off her royal dress. But Sakhis laughing would not let her do so. Radharani was embarrassed, but the Sakhis would not let her um, take off her royal dress. So Madhu Mangal seated Chhatrapati Shri Krishna on Umrao Radhika's right side. They both made a treaty in which Krishna accepted Radharani's sovereignty. Madhu Mangal folded his hands before Srimati Radharani and said, this kingdom of Krishna's body is now under your rule. You can take whatever you desire from him. <clears throat> so they agreed that Krishna accepted defeat and accepted Krishna, uh, Radha, Radharani's sovereignty, that she is the queen of Vrindavan, she is the Umrao. And participating in this um, pastime filled the Sakis and Sakhas with bliss. So we can see the um, Krishna, he agrees his defeat, and um, Krishna, who is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, he relishes being subordinate to his devotees. And Srimati Radharani is the topmost devotee of the Lord. And um, we have this song, uh, Vrindavan Ramyasthan. Vrindavan Ramyasthan, Divya Chinta Mani Dhamar, 
ರತನ ಮಂದಿರ ಮನುಹಾರ ಅಮೃತ ಕಾಲಿಂದಿ ನೀರೆ ರಾಜ ಹಂಸ ಕಿಲಿ ಕಾರಿ ತಾಹಿ ಶೋಭೆ ಕನಕ ಕಮಲ ಸೊ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕ್ರೈಬಿಂಗ್ ದಿಸ್ ಪ್ಲೇಸ್ ಆಫ್ ವೃಂದಾವನ್ ವಿಚ್ ಇಸ್ ಫಿಲ್ಡ್ ವಿತ್ ಚಿಂತಮಣಿ ಜ್ಯುವೆಲ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಮೆನಿ ಜ್ಯುವೆಲ್ ಪ್ಯಾಲೇಸಸ್ ಇನ್ ಟೆಂಪಲ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಸ್ಮ್ಯಾನ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಗೋಲ್ಡನ್ ಲೋಟಸ್ ಫ್ಲವರ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದ ಮಿಡಲ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಲೋಟಸ್ ಫ್ಲವರ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಗೋಲ್ಡನ್ ಪ್ಲೇಸ್ ಸರೌಂಡ್ ಬೈ ಏಟ್ ಪೆಟಲ್ಸ್ and on these eight petals there are eight principal sakhis of shrimati radha rani and in the center there is uh, lord shyama sundar and shrimati radha rani sitting on a jewel throne and the beauty of the divine couple and their charming joking and laughter so we we heard several past times where they uh, where radha and krishna they are joking and laughing that's what is going on it's sh- it's showering nectar everywhere in vrindavan and narottam das thakur is praying that i pray that these blissful eternal transcendental past times of divine couple may be always manifested in my heart so we can meditate on how blissful that place is where there is uh, always joking and love fighting going on between shrimati radha rani and krishna and, and um, we can pray to um, shrimati radha rani to you know uh, to give us entrance into that place and and reveal to her these uh, reveal to us these past times of radha and krishna so i have other things to discuss but i think i'll stop here maybe i'll discuss tomorrow so thank you everyone for hearing some past times hari krishna thank you for the very nice class anybody like to say anything Thank you Mata ji for the beautiful class. Thank you Mata ji, Hare Krishna. Krishna. Thank you Mata ji in very nice class. Thank you Mata ji. I was reading uh, <clears throat> today morning only. <clears throat> How uh, when one gets a higher taste then the lower taste goes away. So Shila Prabhupad goes to the cinema. <laughs> so let me read this. This is a lecture Prabhupad gave on Srimad Bhagavatam. He said, our students, Krishna conscious person, if he's invited, come on, there is a nice picture in the cinema. No, he will never go. He will never go. <laughs> of course, many devotees may go who are not experiencing that higher taste. But Prabhupad is talking about those pure devotees. who have developed such a higher taste that they are not attracted like you were talking about bhakti paresh anubhav virakti anyatra so prabhupad is saying our students krishna conscious person if he is invited come on there is a nice picture in the cinema no he will never go he will never go and prabhupad is chuckling because he has become hansa he is not a crow that he will go to such places why what is there so hansa here it is said tad vaya samtirtham ushanti manasa that famous word so nayad vat nayad chitra padam nayad vachas chitra padam haridya sho that words is there that those words that did not do not describe the glories of the lord they are like the place of pilgrimage for the crows the crows go where all this garbage is thrown whereas the swans you know those who have nice taste they go to the place where krishna katha is going on so so hansa it here it is said tad vayasam tirtham ushanti manasa they reject reject ushanti manasa nayatra hansa nirmanti usikshaya there was a incidence there was an incidence in my life incident in my life i was of course at that time householder so one of one my friend he was going to cinema with his family and he saw me <clears throat> i was in the street and he immediately stopped his car and he asked me that you come we are going to cinema the prabhupad was walking and his friend came in the car and said come come there is a nice cinema come he was insisting prabhupad come come of course at that time i don't think he met bhakti siddhan saraswati thakur or so i refused that if you give me 1000 dollars still i shall not go to cinema so he dragged me 
He took me to the cinema house, but I never entered. I came back, you see, because it was detestful. So this is the proof that, you know, you have got a higher taste. So, correct. So that's what I was reading this morning. So I thought maybe I'll share. So especially Prabhupada, there is a whole series of quotes on the test of spiritual advancement. And the test of spiritual advancement is how much you have become free from the lower desires. And if you are not there, we should not pretend, you know, if you're not getting that. But uh, we should know where we are. So the test of spiritual advancement, Prabhupada would often say, is detachment from material enjoyment. And especially uh, the sex desire is considered the, you know, the highest form of enjoyment, as yesterday also Prabhu was saying, the material enjoyment is the highest. So how much we have become free from these lower modes. So both gross and then there is a gross desire and there is subtle desire. <clears throat> so subtle desire is for name, fame, lab, puja, pratishta. So, so that is what I wanted to say. Also this uh, Tulsi prayer you are saying, we are also playing to uh, Tulsi Maharani to engage us in devotional service, to give us the right to engage in devotional service. And also this Hare Krishna Mahamantra is also a prayer. Actually, that is what it means. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Oh Radharani, please engage me in the service of Krishna. Because without Radharani's sanction, nobody can engage in service of Krishna. Now, one, one person was asking me that, you know, you are saying that offer flower to Radharani, don't directly offer to Krishna. But Radha and Krishna are one. So how does it make sense? Logically, they are both the same. Like we say, Radha and Krishna are non-different. They are different, but they are non-different. Also, because they are, the one is energy and the other is energetic. So what does it mean? Somebody was asking me. So why, why we are saying that put flower in Radharani's hand? Because Radha and Krishna are one. So logically it should be the same. Whether you put uh, in Radha's hand or you put in Krishna's hand. So I was just saying that is how it is. You know, Ra Krishna is manifested as Radharani. And uh, that is how he wants service through Radharani. So that is what Krishna wants. So we can't say logically it doesn't make sense if we say Radha and Krishna are one and then we say oh, we should give flower to Radharani if you want to give it to Krishna. Mm -hmm. So if they are both the same then whether I give it to Krishna or I give it to Radharani what difference it makes. I was trying to he was saying like that and I was saying that no but Krishna has made it like that that you have to go through Radharani. So sometimes, you know, if we apply too much logic and all this, we cannot understand this pastimes. Although Chaitanya Map, uh, Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami says that one should apply logic uh, to the mercy of Lord Chaitanya. Siddhanta Bolia Chitte Na Kare Alas, something like that he says. One should not be. But then if we apply this logic, then we may not understand. So for Leela, we cannot apply all the logic. Uh, so Siddhanta Bolia Chitta Na Kare Alas. So one should not. Ya Hoyte Krishna Lage Sudrida Manas. Anyway, so just thinking. So that is how it is. So Radharani, through Radharani, we have to approach Krishna. Prabhupada was saying. Um, other thing I was thinking, there is offense, there is discrimination, and there is uh, offense. So, as you were saying, we, were, we should not. Actually, if you want to go back to Godhead, we have to chant 16 rounds, at least 16 rounds. Avoid the offenses and follow the four regulatory principles. That's it. That's all we have to do. Prabhupada said, if you chant 16 rounds, of course, he meant purely and follow the four regulatory principles, you'll go back home, back to Godhead. So I was thinking about this offense and discrimination. 
we have to discriminate. That is not uh, everybody discriminates, you know, whether they say it or not, but there is always a judgment. Everybody makes a judgment about others. Otherwise, you can't live this life. Right? Uh, in every like we make a judgment. This is good food. This is bad food. I should not eat the bad food. I should make I should eat good food. So similarly in association, we have to judge. That is a, judgment means discriminating. OK, this is good. This is not good. But that discrimination should not result in offense it means. We should not. Uh, criticize if but there is always good association and there is bad association. There are devotees. Who are more advanced and that the devotees who are less advanced, but we don't criticize the less advanced devotees. Of course, we are. I'm, I'm myself less advanced, but I'm just saying that we have to seek out advanced association. And uh, advanced association means free from this lust. Desire to enjoy uh, lust, anger, greed. So such association one has to seek out. <clears throat> Desire to enjoy in this material existence. And attached to serving Krishna. So, because the function of intelligence is to discriminate. But we should not discriminate out of envy. Sometimes we want to feel superior. So we think yes, this person is not good because I want to feel superior. So even if there is good qualities, we don't. Uh, we don't uh, accept the good qualities that is envy. Like one Prabhupada gave the example of envy. That one friend is telling another friend. You know, Mr. Chakravarti has been appointed as the High Court judge. And this friend, other friend, who is envious of Mr. Chakravarti saying, no, 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 that cannot be. But this other friend is saying, no, no, I've seen him. I've seen him in the court. He's sitting on the bench of the High Court judge. He's sitting right up there, you know, where High Court judges sit. Oh, then what did he say? Oh, he may be sitting there, but he's he may not be getting a salary of a high court judge. Or some or other pull down. Now, because you don't like a person, so you pull down. So even if there is good quality, you don't appreciate. So envy is considered very. It's the last thing. It's a very subtle thing. And envy of Krishna has brought us to this material world. Because we wanted to become Krishna. We wanted to enjoy like Krishna. Now that envy of Krishna is also we are translate. It's getting translated into so many envy for so many other living entities because everybody wants to be in the center. So, but in spiritual world, Krishna is in the center. So as long as we have envy in the heart, then uh, we cannot. Envy means somebody devotee was saying envy, no vacancy. We don't have any vacancy in the spiritual world as long as you have. So we can only become humble when we give up our envy. And that's very difficult. That's one of the last on earth has to go. Because we all have a desire to control others. Everybody has a desire to control others and lord it over others. We want to control others. We want others to behave like just as I want. <laughs> so, so like that. <clears throat> so then we cannot go back to the uh, spiritual world as long as we have envy. And um, because we want to be prominent, so how can we have Krishna in the prominent place? And humility you can only develop when you become free from the desire to for sense gratification. How much humble you are can be measured by this thing. How much I like to serve others and how much I like to be served by others. How much I like to serve others means especially devotees. How much I like to serve and other non devotees also. How much I like to serve them by giving Krishna. Not that I want to become master of them. <clears throat> I want to serve how, um, how much I can take uh, the position of a servant and how much I like to be served by others. So. Uh, another way to become humble is to realize how many times we have fallen down. Or if you have not fallen down, then how many times we can, how easily we can fall down. 
we are so vulnerable to this Maya that we can fall down any time. So in this way we can become humble. Oh Krishna, that verse you quoted, Devi Esha Gunamai, Mama Maya Durataya. This Maya is so powerful. And uh, realizing that I am very helpless in this, you know, Maya. Maya is so powerful. So, so then we can take shelter of Krishna. So unless actually we become free from these material desires, then uh, we cannot become humble. Because material desires are the ones that is giving this material body and you know that is what separates us from Krishna. So the pure devotee is Anya Bilashita Shunyam. He has no material desire. So only so how to become free from material desire? Oh, you have to pray to Lord Narsinga Dev. This verse is there. Om Namo Bhagavate Narsingaya Namasteja Steja Seya Vira Vir Bhava Vachranakha Vachradanstra. We have to pray from our heart. This jackal who was there <clears throat> in this hole, you know, mm -hmm. jackal represents the conditioned soul and then the fire represents the threefold miseries like that. But only when you want to be rescued, you can be rescued. I was thinking about that. Nobody can rescue anybody until you want to be rescued. So jackal was crying because he was feeling the heat. And generally, we can only become like, uh, I mean, generally we only cry only when there is heat in our life. <laughs> like only when there is distress in our life, then we cry. When things are nice, nobody can, nobody wants to cry for the Lord. So Krishna sometimes turns on the heat. <laughs> so then we start crying, you know, uh, for the Lord. So material world is meant to give us distress so that we say, oh, I'm done with this material existence. I, I don't want this. I will, but that takes time. You know, uh, we have to intelligent person. He, he can understand by seeing others in his family. So many people have died. So many people today are suffering in the hospital. You can see around so much misery is there. So many people are getting into accidents and getting you know paralyzed and things like that so learning from others experience one can cry but until sometimes the when the heat turns on then only you can cry so the jackal is crying because he's in a very difficult situation they have thrown him into a hole and they have lit a fire and he has no way to be rescued out so and then he cries so, so this material world is a very, the more we realize that this material world, we can cry when we realize that what we have been put into, this cycle of birth and death, this horrible material existence, we have fallen into this horrible ocean of birth and death and everything is temporary, you know, and everything is going to pass away. And so in that way only we can cry. Otherwise, I was thinking about myself. Why cannot cry? Because don't feel the heat of material existence. So we cannot cry. When supposing somebody touches you with a hot thing, then what happens? Then you start crying, right? Somebody is torturing you. Then you start crying. <clears throat> so material world is meant. So the devotees, when they feel... Uh, this heat in the material existence, they take shelter, Krishna. And the intelligent devotees, they take even without feeling the heat because they know this is not the right place. Material consciousness is not the right place. And the greed, there has to be greed for chanting the holy name. There has to be greed for serving Krishna. That greed, I was thinking uh, about Bilva Mangal Thakur. How much greed he had to meet Chintamani. Because that, why, why he had the greed? Because it was giving him pleasure. That association with Chintamani, uh, who was living on the other side of the river, was giving him so much pleasure that every day, maybe he was going every day, every day he had to go and meet Chintamani. 
So that kind of greed we are supposed to have, but that only happens when we get taste. When you have taste, because Bilba Mangal Thakur had taste, or when we want to develop a taste, then only you can get this greed. You one has to be very greedy to develop the taste for serving Krishna. So either you have the taste, then you already got the greed because that taste is so wonderful. Or if you don't have the taste, then you want to get the taste. And to get the taste, you are greedy to get the taste. So, so those are some things that I was thinking as you were speaking. Okay, anything else? And all the pastimes, the nice pastimes of Radha Krishna. So spiritual world is fun, but we feel there is more fun in the material world than in the spiritual world. That's why we are in this material world. We think, yeah, I can go to so many places, I can enjoy in so many ways. So we feel that there is, as you are saying, there is so much fun in the spiritual world, but we feel in our material consciousness, we feel there is more fun in the material world. And that's why we don't want to go to the spiritual world. <clears throat> so, okay, so we'll stop here. Then I don't want to go on and on. But thank you very much for the. It's, anybody else like to say anything on any reflections on the class or? Probably I have a question. Yeah. Maybe it's not a good question, but so why we are uh, Radha ji is giving us bhakti. So why we are not? Why we cannot chant Sri Radhe 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 instead of chanting the whole? Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Is it okay to chant like that also? Radhe, Radhe, Radhe. Yeah. Somebody want to answer this. Maybe Sudanda want to answer this. So the spiritual master is a representation of Srimati Radharani and our spiritual master has told us in Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who is Radha Krishna combined, who has given us this Hare Krishna mantra. So we actually can go to Radharani by going through the spiritual master and Nityananda Prabhu, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, like that. Then we can approach Radha and Krishna. So we have to follow the instruction of our spiritual master. And that's what Prabhupada has told us to do. Okay. And if I can add one more, Mataji and Prabhu. Um, uh, also, um, I also had many times Prabhu, Prabhuji, he say that uh, Hare in the mantra, Hare Krishna mantra, actually denotes uh, Radha Rani herself. So that first part, Hare, is, is the energy of Krishna, which is Radha. So it is included in the Maha Mantra, Hare Krishna. Thank you. Rakesh, want to say something? He unmuted. Uh, no problem. Or you unmuted, maybe you wanted to say something. Yeah, so the Hare in the Hare Krishna Mahamantra represents Radha Rani. Of course, it's sometimes, and we always worship Radha with Krishna. We just don't say Radhe, Radhe, Radhe. Prabhupada, they would say Jai Radhe. Then Prabhupada would say Hare Krishna. So we don't say Radhe, Radhe. Then Vrindavan, they say like that, Radhe, Radhe. Mm. But in our Hare Krishna movement, we say Hare Krishna because we worship Radha Rani with Krishna, not Radha Rani alone. In Austin or somewhere, they have some temple of Radharani like that. But that is not all bona fide. You don't worship Radharani alone. Radharani also likes to be with Krishna. So we worship Radha Krishna together. So, and it is also said, Sampradaya Vihina Mantraste Nishfala Mataha. Mantra has to be received in a Sampradaya. So you cannot uh, make up your own words and speak. The mantra, the mantra that we chant has to come in a sampradaya, in a disciplic succession. So like I think in the Nimbarka sampradaya, they have Radhe Krishna, Radhe Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Radhe Radhe. It's the same as Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. So also we say one Krishna is three times name of Ram. So then we may say, well, why don't we chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna. One name of Krishna gives three times the benefit of chanting the name of Ram. 
So, no, but the mantra is, it was pointed out, it is given, it is coming in the disciplic succession. That's how Lord Chaitanya gave us and that's how we chant. So, but you can chant Radhe Radhe, just like that if you want to chant. But mantra, what you are chanting for your pra daily practice, that has to be in the parampara. That has to be received in a parampara. Yeah, I think Sukhanda wanted to say something. Yeah, one thing I heard from uh, Amrinda Prabhu, he's, he was saying that uh, Radharani actually gets pleasure hearing the name of Krishna, and Krishna gets pleasure hearing the name of Radha. So saying Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, we are pleasing both Radha and Krishna, but Radharani is more pleased if we say Krishna. Yeah, so, uh, so Krishna, Krishna's name pleases Radharani, and Radharani's name pleases Krishna. So... So we want to be pleased both Radha and Krishna. Also, Prabhu, I I I heard in some lectures like uh, Radha Rani also chants uh, the Mahamantra. Hmm. Yeah, the gopis they chant Krishna's names. I don't know if they chant the Mahamantra. Maybe they are chanting Mahamantra in the spiritual world. <laughs> so it is said Mahamantra is also being chanted in the spiritual world. It has come from there. Golokera Prem Dhan Hari Nam Sankirtan. So. So Krishna's name, okay, Krishna is also enchanted by his own beauty. We know in the morning in Dwarka when he looks in the water, he looks his, at his own reflection and Krishna says, who is this beautiful person? Krishna is enchanted by his own beauty. So maybe the name of Krishna is also enchanting to Krishna so, because it is ever increasing. Uh, Krishna is non different from his name. Similarly, Radharani is non different from her name. Okay, so the way is the the way out of this material world is the Nam. So Hari Nam. That's the main thing. How we can conquer our anarthas or get rid of our anarthas is through the holy name. Okay, Prabhupada said like that ninety percent of your advancement comes from chanting the holy name, and that is why this is the Yuga Dharma. Um, if we if we know so much philosophy but we don't chant, then it will not be effective. Of course, it says any any one of the nine processes can give you perfection. But in this age, tar madhya sarva sresh nam sankirtan niraprade nam loya pai prem dhan. So, in amongst all the nine processes, this chanting of the holy name is the most important. And to remain inspired to chant. We have to remain in the association of devotees who have inspiration to chant and read the Srimad Bhagavatam every day, mm -hmm. Prabhupada's purports. Then we will. <clears throat> okay. So, anything else? Okay, we'll stop there then. Thank you very much. Association. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.